Happy Easter. Siu salimia tu mtu mwambia Happy Easter. Yeah, we bless the Lord for giving us a, a season like this to celebrate what he did for us while we were still sinners. Therefore, we are grateful to God this morning. Uh, allow me to go straight into the word of God from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 1 to 11. Siski Biblia zikifunguliwa hama uko tuko digital. Hebu angalia jirani kama ako na Bible. Eti iko kwa simu. Hiyo hiyo ya simu WhatsApp message inaweza kuja itaribu maneno. So eti umeweka? Sawa sawa may the Lord uh, help us to always love to come with the word of God, uh, the tangible Bible in the house of God. Because you can relate with it easily. You know, Job Biblia nasema ya kumba kanisa la kale bada ya kufunzo. Walikuwa naenda nyumbani wana chambua. Na wana ulizana kama ilo neno walifunzo ni kweli. And therefore, uh, I just want to encourage us, even in this digital world, let us uh, purchase these Bibles. And I know God will bless us. Uh, the book of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 11. The Bible says, Now, brothers... I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, and of which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I pass on to us. For what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance. That Christ died for our sin, sins according to the scripture. That he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. And then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time. Most of whom are still living though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one uh, abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believe. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, uh, there is one thing that makes uh, this day to be unique and to be important to us as believers, because it is the day that changed the course of our lives. We all deserve uh, the punishment and the judgment of God. But when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, it changed the course of our life completely. And we were justified uh, by only believing in him. And therefore this is a day that calls us to reflect on the love of Christ for us to reflect on his sacrifice and also to rejoice for what he did for us uh, in the cross. You know, when I was thinking of Easter and how this event was reported to people, uh, I was just uh, being informed in my mind, probably the technology of that day, there were no good technology to pass the message. Just as in today's uh, century, when there is any breaking news, it comes for so fast, it circulates so fast. But though this was the greatest news, the breaking news of that day, we see God himself using the angels, as we have seen him in different instances, 
uh, bringing or sending the angel to come and confirm, to come and convey a certain message. And therefore we see him sending the angels and we also we see him sending some of the witnesses who visited the grave uh, during that period. But however, as we celebrate Easter, you know it is, a, it is one of the holidays that we have been used to celebrate. But when we are celebrating, do we know the reason as to why we are celebrating? And do we know what is resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus Christ meant to our lives? Today I want to speak about believe the resurrected redeemer. And as I, I was thinking of the topic, it came clear to me that we can also occupy our divine territories if we believe on the resurrected redeemer. Where, Paul, uh, where we have read today, it is Paul being aware of the Corinth church, being aware of their faith, and being aware, being aware of the storms that they were facing. He started by encouraging or reminding the Corinthian church about the basic principles of the life of a Christian. And I want to propose to us this morning that we need to believe the resurrection of our Redeemer, of the Redeemer, because his resurrection authenticates the power of the gospel, or it validates, it affirms the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And which gospel is this that we are talking about? It is not a new gospel that we have never heard. It is a gospel that has been preached over the centuries, over the years. And Paul is telling the Corinth church, now brothers, that is in verse 1, now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you receive, and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I receive, I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scripture. You know, this is not a new message. That is why Paul is telling the Corinthian church that I want to remind you of the gospel that you have holded firm unto it. And one thing that it was coming clear to my mind is that probably we might have heard this message again and again and probably we might have come to that point of accepting the message of the gospel of jesus christ and uh, allowed him to be the savior of our lives but that is not enough it is not just enough to know that indeed jesus christ he was born he he died he was buried and he rose from the dead because of my salvation it is not just enough to know that. And Paul knew that in the journey of salvation, in the work of every believer, it is okay you have professed Christ to be the Lord and the Savior of your life. But that one does not mean that along the way, you will not find situations, temptations, and trials of life that can make you move away from that faith. And therefore, he is reminding them of the gospel that he had preached to them. The gospel that he had received. It is the same, same gospel that he passed to them. And therefore this morning I want to, uh, to encourage us. That the greatest mandate that we have. It is true we have already received the gospel. And the gospel is that Christ died for our sins. So that we can be, be justified. And so that we can be counted righteous uh, before him. But one thing I want to encourage us is that in the journey of salvation, we need to hold firm into the word of truth. We need to hold firm into the teaching of God. We need to hold firm into the word of God. Because without holding firm into this world, there are so many things, there are so many situations that can, that can toss you back and forth. And you know, I was being reminded of Job. Job was a man who feared God. 
he was blameless before the Lord. It came a time in his life when he was going through a trial, a trying moment, a difficult time. He lost everything. But we see a job who, who had all that farm into the word of God. He said, though my flesh might be destroyed, one thing I am assured for is that I will see my creator face to face. Do we have believers today? Yes, they have been preached about the gospel of salvation. They know the way to salvation is believing on Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But are they still holding on and holding firmly into that word? That is why the Bible says when the foundation of the word are shaken, the righteous shall live by faith. And we know faith comes by hearing and hearing what? The word of God. You will agree with me that different moments and times in your life, probably when you went through a trying time, when you faced temptations, when you faced discouragement, when you faced insult, when you were persecuted, and you turn for comfort into the word of God, your feeling, your understanding of the entire situation changed. But many times when we go through the same difficult moments and situations of life, and we turn into the counsel of the world, the probability is that our faith will be shaken. And therefore Paul is reminding the church of Corinth, this message that I am preaching to you about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it is important to us and we need to believe in that message of the, the resurrected redeemer. Number one, because it authenticates the power of the gospel. Have you ever found yourself in a situation whereby there's a lot of sickness in your family? Yes, you have been preached. You have accepted the word of God that brings salvation. But you find yourself in that moment whereby there's a lot of sickness in your family. Can you still hold on into the word of God? And say, if you have said, I am the Lord, your healer, I will stand by that word. Have you found yourself in a situation of lack where you, don't, you cannot see a breakthrough before you? Are you still able to stand by the word of God? That I am your God and I am able to supply to all your needs according to my riches and glory. But many times, the people who have heard this gospel again and again, in times of difficult, in times of trial, in times of temp temptation, many tend to turn away. That is why the book of Matthew, when you read the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 21 to 23, the Bible says, brothers will betray brothers to death. And that one we have seen, even in families. And the father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stand firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly I say, truly I say, I tell you, you will not finish going through the town of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Mary is encouraging the believers that yes, you are born again. Yes, you have received the gospel of salvation. But are you able to hold firmly into this world in times of persecution? When you see your kids rebelling against you, will you say, and start going to look for solution in the world? When you are betrayed in your workplace, can you still hold on and firmly into the word of God? Because you know that the word of God is true and it cannot change. And the Bible says he is not a man to lie. Whatever he has promised in his word, he is faithful to fulfill it. How many times have we holded firm into the word of God? And the end result when we hold firm into the word of God, what comes as a result of that is joy and peace 
and satisfaction in our lives because we have tarried. We have gone through persecution. We have gone through difficult time, but we have holded firm into our faith. And that is why the book of Colossians 1.23, the Bible says, if you continue in your faith, establish and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, have become a servant. We are still being encouraged to hold firm into our faith. Because we know that those who hold firm into their faith, they are assured that God will perfect them to the end. But many times when we fail to hold firm into our faith, the end result is regret. Probably we can get a quick fix. But will it last? You know some people say, Hakuna kitu ya shetani, aina garama. Yes, you can get a quick fix for your business. A quick fix for your health. A quick fix for your kids. But how long will it last? Will the end result will be joy or sorrow? And therefore, Paul is reminding the Corinthians church, as I am reminding you today, that this gospel, it is being affirmed to be powerful by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When he rose from the dead, it was to assure us, to authenticate the power of the gospel, the trustworthiness of the gospel, that we can trust this word. Because no one has ever trusted the word of God and ashamed in this life. And therefore that is why I am encouraging us that we need to believe the resurrection of Jesus Christ because his, his resurrection authenticates the power of the gospel or the trustworthiness of the gospel. And therefore Paul is saying whatever I have received, this is what I am sharing. This is what I am preaching unto you. How many people here are born again? Hey, you know this is personal. This is personal. If you are born again, you must have encounter or come across to a person who reminded you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. He reminded you that he loves you. He reminded you that it doesn't matter how far you are from him. But he died and he resurrected because of your sins for you to be justified. And Paul is saying, whatever I have received, this is what I am passing on to you. Then I was asking myself this morning, when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, the witnesses who went into the grave and realized that his body was missing, when the angel appeared, he was telling them, go and tell them, I am not in the grave, but I have risen. The message was, go and tell them. And then I was asking myself, if we ourselves, we have been told the same message by some people, how many people have you ever told them this gospel that Jesus Christ died for you? He was buried because of you. He was persecuted because of your sin. And he rose again to assure you of life eternal. You know, sometimes we, we take life in a very casual way. And we don't care about the wealth of the people around us. But if the angels from above, that is the message they were telling the people who witnessed that the grave was empty. And he was telling them, go and tell them that I am not dead. I am not in the grave. I have already risen. Do we have kids who are rebelling? Do we have husbands who don't know God? Do we have parents who are still holding on into the traditions of our cultures? Have you ever found it in your heart to go and tell them that Jesus loves you? That Jesus died for your sin? 
When people are against you, when they persecute you, when they do evil to you, can you still extend what you received, the love you received from God to other people? And the promise was, was two. He gave them two promises. That when you go, the Lord will go before you. You only need to go. That neighbor who does not know Jesus Christ, that brothers of yours who does know Jesus Christ, that brother who is a drunkard, that husband who is a drunkard, you only need to go to him and tell him Jesus Christ died because of your sin. And the Bible says he will go ahead of you. That is why when you read in the book of Matthew 28, 6-7, he says he is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you in Galilee. There you will see him, now I have told you. They have been told, Mary, go and tell the disciples. Go and tell them, I am no longer in the grave. But as you go, I will go ahead of you. You know, that is the greatest encouragement. To know that you don't need to fear anything. Because you only need to avail yourself and present that gospel to an individual. Because the Lord will already be ahead of you. Is somebody being encouraged today to reach to a person who does not know the Lord? You know, people say our parents all the time, when you try to tell them the gospel... They tell you where in Zili nilianza kusikia kapla sija kuza. And therefore many keep off. They say wata ni atane na uyu mze. Maali ata okokea, ata okokea. Are you not concerned? Then do you want to share the same gospel you receive to him or her? The promise is that before you go or when you are going, he will be ahead of you. And the second promise was that the Lord will present himself to them. It is not you. Your work is just to go and tell him that he is not dead. He is alive because of you. And that is why Jesus Christ met two men. He had already presented himself to the two disciples on their way to a mouse. And they are discussing about how Jesus was persecuted. They thought he was to be the king of Jerusalem. But he has died. Therefore, he asked them, what are you talking about? And they asked him, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem? But he already presented himself to them. When we go, then the Lord himself will present himself to the people that he has sent us unto. And therefore, this morning, I wanted to encourage us that the message of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it is a message of peace. It brings peace into the hearts of people. It is a powerful message that you tell a person who has been relying on the gods of this world that it does not matter how far you are from God. As long as you come as you are, he is ready to make your sins as white as snow. It will give an individual peace. It is a powerful message. It is a promising message. It is a persuasive message. That is why I am encouraging us that we need to believe on the resurrection of our Redeemer. That is why we need to be reminded today that in the book of Ephesians 2.10, for we are God hand workmen, created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared in advance for us. There is a work that was prepared in advance for us to do. And if in your life you have never told anyone that Jesus Christ loves you, that Jesus Christ died for your sin, it is a high time to take the initiative and go and pass the same message to those people. Number two, there is a, we need to believe the resurrection of our Redeemer because it does not only authenticate the power of the gospel 
or the trustworthiness of the gospel, but it also assures us of eternity with God. In verse 5, when you read downwards, Paul is explaining to people that Jesus appeared to, people who witness that indeed Jesus is had risen from the dead. But when you read verse, verse 7, he said that he then appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Not, not verse 7, but verse 6. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. The Bible is not saying those some have died. It is affirming what is written in the book of uh, Corinthians again of them that die in Christ. They are not referred as dead, but they are referred as people who have slept. And therefore that is to affirm or assure us that the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus Christ's resurrection was not the first one. Do we agree with each other? There was the daughter who was raised by the same Jesus from the dead. We had Lazarus who was raised from the dead. We, have, we had Tabitha in the book of Acts who was raised from the dead. But why is, it the, what, what, why is it the resurrection of Jesus Christ so important? Because those who had died, they died but did not resurrect. And if they, not, they did not, those who died, they died to die again. And to wait until Christ come so that they will resurrect with the new bodies. But when Jesus Christ died once, he died once never to die again. And therefore his death assured us that the, whoever believes in him is guaranteed, is assured of life eternal. And that is why when you read in the book of Galatians chapter 4, the Bible says, Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. Galatians chapter 4. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Mm -hmm. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who call out, Abba, Father. Verse 7. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. You are not only going to be an heir here, but you are going to be an heir for eternity. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is the assurance that we have. You know, uh, uh, another pastor was preaching somewhere, and he was saying he once they listened to a song that was being sung in the radio. That this is the only life that we have. So let us enjoy life to the fullest because there is no any other life. But when he listened to that song, he said, no, it is not true. There is life after this life. And the biggest question that we can ask ourselves today is where will you spend your eternity? Because some people will spend their eternity in the presence of God. But some people will spend their eternity together with the devil in pain, in suffering. But where will you spend your eternity? And you know, one theologian, uh, uh, a teacher somewhere said, you know, when we think of the end times, we are being told that, uh, and we saw a new Jerusalem come from heaven, and this world was, yet it was wrapped and thrown into the sea. When we think of this eternity with God, we think of a moment being in the presence of God, just bowing, and worshipping before him. But you know, he was explaining to us and telling us, the life of eternity with God, it will be God himself restoring the earth into its original form. 
where there was love, the original garden of Eden, where there was peace, everything was available. And the presence of God was there. Imagine this earth being filled with the presence of God. There will be no corruption. There will be no hatred. There will be no killing each other. But there will be a lot of love. A lot of fruitfulness. Because he will be restoring the original Eden. And that is a life that is assured to them that believe on the resurrected Redeemer. A life in the presence of God. But there are people who will spend their eternity in the presence of every evilness. Where the devil will be the king. Where there will be no love and mercy. Where there will be corruption of the highest level. You know we think of fire. Eh? We think of it like that. Sinio. Tunasema watu watakuwa anachomeka. Unachomeka unaisha. Maisha yako inaisha. Biblia nasema ya kwamba utakuwa unachomeka bila kuisha. But it is only symbolic. It does not mean that you will be drawn in fire and be consumed. But it means that the life of eternity, it will be a life full of pain and torture. No mercy, no love, no God, no forgiveness, nothing good in that world. Therefore the biggest question is that, have you believed the resurrection of the Redeemer? Are you sure where you will spend your eternity? Because yes, today probably I might be under 40. You might be under 20. You might be under 80 years. But the period that you are living here is shorter than the time that you will live with our God. Because when we hear of eternity, it is life without her. Without an end. Please let us prepare for that day. Because that day is coming. For sure he came to save us. But when he comes again. He will not be coming to save. He will be coming to judge. And the Bible says. That both the righteous and the wicked. They, they will be judged. But the judgment for the righteous. Will be different from the judgment of sinners. The judgment for the righteous will be standing before the Lord. And whatever they did for the Lord will be tested. And if it qualifies, there is a crowd for them. But the judgment for sinners will be straight to destruction. Where will you spend your eternity? First Peter 1, 3 and 9, the Bible says, Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and fading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. They start living hope. Probably you are here, you are a young person. Do you have that living hope? Because we don't know when and how we will exit this world. But no matter when and no matter how you will exit the world, are you ready for eternity? Do you know where you will spend your eternity? That is why this week uh, I shared with some few people this clip. Where a young man was being asked, are you born again? And he was saying, I preach the gospel. I speak in tongues. I give to the poor. I go for evangelism missions. And he was asked again, are you born again? If you are not able to answer that question, even today, you are not sure of your eternity. And that is what the Bible says. To them that believes in him, he gave them the right to be called children of God. To be called sons of God, not children, but sons of God, who are heirs now and then. The last thing I want to say to us, that we need to believe the resurrected Redeemer, 
Because his resurrection does not only authenticate the power of the gospel. It does not only ensure us uh, of life, eternity with our God. But the same same resurrection assures us that Jesus' sacrifice was final and perfect. You don't need to give any other sacrifice. In verse 9, Paul is saying, For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. In those verses, you will see Paul mentioning the word grace three times. The sacrificial system of the Old Testament where people used to be justified by the law. Where people used to be justified through offering the animals. Yes, the Lord had accepted it. But it could not complete the redemption of man. Until Jesus Christ came, that whoever believes in him will not perish. You know, when I was thinking of Paul, it came to my mind that probably sometimes you look into yourself, into yourself, and you feel like I am beyond the salvation of God. I am beyond the masses of God. I am beyond the love of God. It does not matter how far you have gone from God. One thing that you need to believe is that he died and he rose that if I believe in him, I have everlasting life. His sacrifice was enough. You don't need to give any money for you to be saved. You don't need to align or to know any person for you to be saved. And that is why uh, when Jesus Christ was taken to the high priest, and the high priest put Jesus on an oath, and he told him, you must tell us the truth. Who are you? And he said, I am the son of God. When he said so, the high priest told his garment. And in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in those times, when a priest tore his garment, it meant that his priest, priesthood work had come to an end. Why did the priest do that? He did that to usher in, not the, not the justification through the law and through the offering of uh, the sacrifices of animal, but to usher in the new covenant. That because the Son of God has come and is going to be crucified, I give way to the new covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ that many will be saved. That is why the Bible says that yes, sin came into the world through one man. But through one man who was righteous and blameless, we are all saved if we only believe. Is there that person in your family? Who you feel like he does not deserve this love of God. Paul was the most worst person. He had the zeal and the passion to do evil. But the mercies of God were sufficient to him. His grace was sufficient to him. And therefore I want to remind us today. That you don't need to do anything. You don't need to give the biggest offering. The biggest tithe. You don't need to support anything so that you receive mercies from God. When Jesus Christ was sacrificed, the shedding of his blood was final and perfect for the redemptions of our sins. And therefore, today I want to remind us, even when you fall, sometimes we need to remember that grace is still sufficient to us. You know I love Mary. The grace of God had effect into the life of Mary Magdalene. The Bible says that at one point before Mary Magdalene met, met Jesus Christ, he was possessed with demonic spirits. But when she encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord set her free. When Jesus Christ was buried, we see in the morning, like today, Mary Magdalene running into the grave to go and confirm, to go and anoint his master. And when he arrived there, and he remembered what 
He did for her. She started weeping. But the Bible says what? She was crying. Two angels appear. One in the side where the head of Christ was and the other angel on the feet where the feet of Jesus Christ, the side where the feet of Jesus Christ were. And they ask her, woman, why are you crying? And they said, they have taken away my Lord. They have taken away my Lord. He was able to reflect what Jesus, the sacrifice that he paid for her to be set free. Therefore they told her, he is risen. But that one did not satisfy her. As she continued weeping, the Bible says he saw a man from the entrance and he thought that man was a gardener of that territory. And then when he called her Mary, he was able to identify with the grace that he had experienced in his time of torture. And her heart was filled with joy. Have you encountered this grace? And does it have effect in your life? Paul, he is confirming that the grace of God indeed had effect in his life. And he is expressing the deepest humility. That indeed I was not worthy. I was the least of the apostles. Is there a person who can identify? Maybe some of us we come from even families and areas and backgrounds where people worship idols. But the Lord has called you out of them and saved you. You have not given him anything. It is by his grace. Therefore, I charge us today, as we come to an end, that this gospel, it is worthy to be reminded other people, as Paul is reminding the Corinth church, because the resurrection gospel gives hope to all those who come to him for salvation. And the resurrection gospel gives confidence to those who are lost in sin. It gives confidence to them that indeed there is a place for me. It doesn't matter how you have lived the past of your lives. But today I want to tell you that he still loves you. He can still identify with your case. He can still identify with your struggle. He knows the sin that is pressing you most. And he says, come unto me and I will give you rest. Because Christ liveth, we can face tomorrow. In a single more I charge us today. Yes, we have been reminded of this gospel, but let us, let us hold firmly into the word of God. Because when we hold firmly into the word of God, we are assured of life eternal with Jesus Christ. Let us bow our heads in the presence of God and respond to the word of God the way we have understood it today. The singer sang and says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. It does not matter what you are going through today. It doesn't matter the challenges that you are facing today. But one thing you need to believe, that because Jesus Christ is alive, I can face tomorrow because he is able to enable me. He is able to empower me. And he is able to hold me to the end. But probably could you be in this service, you are saying, yes, I have heard this gospel that Jesus Christ died because of my sin. He was because of my sins. But you feel in your life, there are moments in life, moments of trials, moments of difficult, that you have not holded firm into the word of God. And you feel in your heart, you want to tell the Lord to forgive you. And to give you grace to continue holding firm into the word of God. Because if we fail to persevere through difficult times, then our belief will be in vain. You can ask the Lord to forgive you and to give you grace to move on. Probably could you be here and you are saying, I am here. Yes, I have heard about the gospel of Christ. 
But this is grace does not have effect in my life. And from today I want to allow him to be the Lord and the Savior of my life. You are saying I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. So that I'll be sure that I will spend my eternity with God. But not in destruction. Is there any person who say I want to give my life to Jesus Christ? Please you can put your hand up. I will pray with you wherever you are. Just raise it well if you are raising it. This is the most beautiful. Thank you for that hand. May the Lord uh, bless you. May the Lord see you. May the Lord grace be sufficient to you. Is there another person who is saying today I want to give my life to Jesus Christ? I want you to pray after me. Thank you that hand at the back. The Lord is seeing and today is the day of your salvation. That the Lord will give you grace. Thank you my sister. I'm seeing many hands lifted. Please if there is another person remaining. Please just put your hand up. Thank you for those hands. Thank you for those hands. I can see your hand at the back at the center. At the center. Our God is a faithful God. It is better to be assured of where you will spend your eternity than to be assured of this life because this life is passing away. I want those who have lifted their hands. Thank you, my brother at the center, just to pray after me this prayer. My Lord and my Father, I thank you for your word. Today I have known that you died and you rose again. That whoever believes in you will not perish, but have everlasting life. I, I, I confess that I am helpless. I am hopeless without you. And today I accept that I am a sinner. And I believe that by confessing you to be the Lord and the Savior of my life, I will be saved. I give my life to you be the Lord and the Savior of my life. Fill me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. And give me grace to stand firm until the end. For the good work that you have begun in me, you will complete it. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me assurance of my eternity. Thank you for your sacrifice. And from today, I will testify that indeed I am born again. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Our oh Lord and our Father, we bless your name. We want to thank you, Jehovah God, because we only stand to speak your word, but your Holy Spirit follow it into our hearts to accomplish your purpose. I want to thank you, Lord, for many that you have served today in this service. Thank you, Lord, because as they live, they will live with assurance of where they will spend their eternity. Thank you for assuring them that your sacrifice was final and it was perfect, O oh God. We pray as a you, mother, O oh God. May you help us as a church to hold firm into the gospel of truth. Help us to persevere in this world full of wickedness, full of darkness, O oh God. That when you will appear, Jehovah God, that you will find faith in us, O oh God. And we will be among the people that will spend eternity with you. Thank you, Lord, for using me as your vessel. May you receive all the glory, you receive all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and all we say. Can we celebrate the Lord today? Let's celebrate the Lord for the many who have given their life to Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you.